Ladies and gents, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to overclock your controller to get the fastest possible response time with the least amount of input delay and also show you how to recalibrate your TMR sticks if you're using an AIM controller like mine. I would like to say console players, you cannot overclock your controller. I'm sorry, you just can't. Only works on PC, but you can calibrate the TMR sticks, but you will need a laptop or PC in order to do so. And you also need a wired connection to that computer. Also, not all controllers can be overclocked. Uh, many of the third party non officially licensed controllers won't let you even some scuff controllers won't let you because they actually have a custom firmware that blocks this. But any official PlayStation, Xbox or aim controller should work for all of this stuff. All right. So number one is going to be the overclocking process. Uh, I, I will have a link in the description for this program. It's called HID USB-F. Um, to download this, it's kind of confusing. You're going to click the code button and then just click the download zip. From there, it will open the zip and then you will have this folder. You can click extract all. Once in there, you're going to double click on the driver one and then there's going to be one that says setup.exe. That's what you're going to run. All right, when you open it up, it's going to just be selected to mice, but we need to change this to all. And this should open all of our USB devices that are plugged into your, your computer. You will see on mine that you're going to be looking for the one that is going to be DualSense wireless controller, assuming you have a DualSense. If you don't, it's probably going to say something like controller, wireless controller. Yours actually might come up as an audio device. Now, mine is already overclocked, so I'm going to undo mine and show you how to, to walk through from the beginning. All right, so first, number one, we're going to need to make sure that our controller is plugged in to your computer. It cannot be plugged in via uh, one of like a hub or one of the front USB ports. It has to be plugged into the back directly into the motherboard of your computer. And then once you find it, go ahead and click on it to highlight it. Once then click on filter on device where it says default here, we're going to pick our desired polling right here. Now, generally, whatever the highest option is, which is probably going to be 8K is going to be fine. Some people say that they have problems when they go above a thousand. So this might depend on the controller. This might depend on your computer. Mine works perfectly fine. 8,000 that is technically going to give you the best response time. But I will also say a thousand like you're not going to notice a difference. So there's nothing wrong with just doing a thousand. You might just need to play around with this. So then you're just going to hit install service and it's asking me to open this file, I guess. And you're going to see it now says yes, 8,000, but the interval is still six. So go ahead and unplug your controller and then plug it back in. And when you do, it should pop up. And now it says, yes, 8001. And that's how you know you've successfully overclocked your controller. And again, if you need to change it, you would literally just change it and then hit install service, do the same thing. Post recording note, you are perfectly fine to just close the program. You really shouldn't have to boot it back up. Um, maybe if you turn your PC off, you can double check, but even then it should stay like this. Also to note, this overclocking is per the USB port that you have your controller plugged into. So if you were to move the USB to a different port, you need to redo the overclock. Now from there, you are technically good to go, but one way that you can verify that your controller is properly overclocked is to use something like DS4 Windows. Uh, just kind of forewarning, some people associate this with cheating. I don't have anything changed on here. I just use it to check. And what you're gonna do is you will open up whatever your profile is and on the you're going to yours will start like this. You're going to click the controller readings and then you're going to it's going to literally say input delay and it should say like zero or one millisecond and you can move your thing around uh, as well. The only thing I did use DS4 to change is that you can change the light bar. And so if you're on the controller here, you can click use custom color or profile color and then you can change the color that lights up. All right. Next to recalibrate the TMR sticks, uh, TMR sticks, in case you're unfamiliar, these are like Hall effect sticks. However, they are much more precise. They feel way better than traditional Hall effects are just more accurate. They feel more one to one like analog sticks, but they have the added benefit that you can recalibrate them and always reset the dead zone to zero so that you will essentially never have stick drift. I know there are some other companies besides AIM starting to roll out TMR. I think AIM's kind of one of the leading ones, but if you have another TMR controller, that sh this process should still work. So again, there's gonna be another download uh, in here. This is DualShock.Tools from GitHub.io, and you're going to, again, make sure your controller is plugged in and then hit connect. It's going to pop up and it's going to ask you which controller. It should just be one for some reason. I don't know what this other controller is, but the DualSense one is the one that I'm using. So now that we are connected and if I move my analog stick around, you can tell that I'm on the right controller because it is responding here. So we're going to first do calibrate stick center and you're going to hit the start button. Again, make sure your controller is plugged in. 
and you're gonna move both sticks to the top left corner, then you hit continue, then you move both to the top right corner, you reset them, hit continue, move both to the bottom left corner, hit continue, move both to the bottom right corner, hit continue. That's it, hit done. Then you're gonna hit calibrate stick range, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna take both sticks and you're gonna rotate them around in, the, in a circle. Go, make sure you go all the way around as far as they can go at least five times. It doesn't matter which direction you go, so I'm just going to the left. And then once you're done, just let go and hit done. This says range calibration completed. And then just from there, before you close out, make sure you hit save changes permanently here. And as you can tell, if you had stick drift, these numbers would be something other than zero, but uh, these are pretty much staying. It looks like I have, I'm like flipping between zero and 0.01, which is such a nominal amount that you'd never notice it. And then that's it, you're good to go. So if you, but if you notice that your controller is, the, the stick drift is changing, you just pull this back up and you can do this again. If you're playing on console, just plug the controller into your console and use it like normal and all of these settings will carry over. And if you are looking for a custom controller like mine, the aim controller, it's got the four reprogrammable paddles on the back. It's got the digital tap triggers that you can actually toggle on and off to a full trigger pull or back. I've got the custom uh, tall right stick on mine with the TMR sticks. Comes with a lifetime warranty. Again, code TCAP the next. The very moment of this video, there's a huge sale going on. The sale changes, but my code always works and will save you a various discount depending on what the sale is. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.